everyone and welcome back to my channel. Yes, I'm alive. I know I disappeared for a bit and I didn't really give much of an explanation on it and when I did, it was just on Instagram and it was to say that there would be a video later on in the week and then there wasn't. I did film a video but it was so busy that I did not have time to edit it and then when I did edit it, I hated it so I didn't post it. But this video, I mean, if you're watching it right now, I guess I didn't hate it. But yeah, I just thought there was no point in uploading a video that I hate because if I hate it, other people probably will as well. And yeah, who wants to watch a terrible video? Um, but yeah, anyway, enough with the rambling about that. This video is all about language problems and language learning problems and how to overcome them. Well, some suggestions of how, of course, to, to overcome them. I'm not the expert on everything. Um, but yeah, shall we get on with the video? So the first language learning problem is one that I think we can all relate to. Finally, feeling confident that you understand you know, that language when it's spoken, that you are able to understand native speakers and then you meet somebody with an accent that you haven't come across before or maybe they just mumble a bit when they talk or something, I don't know, but you just struggle to understand this person or people from that area with that accent and then you think that maybe your language skills aren't as good as you thought they were. Yeah, that's always a fun one. Um, honestly, can you really overcome this? Mm, yeah and no because obviously you can try and expose yourself to as many different accents as possible. I always say like even though I'm learning Spanish as it's spoken in the peninsula in Spain itself, I always try and watch some stuff on Netflix that or on YouTube, watch some YouTubers that aren't just from Spain. I'll try and watch some YouTubers from somewhere else like Peru for example or I'll watch maybe a Netflix show that is filmed and set in Mexico just to expose myself to different accents. Now of course that's still not going to expose myself to every single accent because you know there's so many different accents um, in every language and some of them you know you might not come across in the media um, but <laughs> you know it can help it can help it is the best way to overcome it and if it makes you feel any better just remember that you know there are people who struggle to understand accents in your mother tongue, especially if it's English. There's so many different accents of English, for example. I always hear people say they can't understand Scottish people, for example. And to be fair, as much as I like to think I can understand Scottish people, there, there have been times where I've had to ask Scottish people to repeat a few things, and I'm an English native speaker. Yeah, I'm a native speaker of English, is what I was trying to say. So, yeah. Just remember that and hopefully that'll make you feel better. <laughs> now this next one is one that I am sure we've all experienced and it sucks. It definitely sucks. And that is when you finally build up the confidence to speak to somebody in your target language and they reply to you in English. You just really want to practice and you know you you try so hard and they reply to you in English and you don't know if it's because they don't understand you or just because they think they're doing you a favor or because they want to practice or what but it's annoying and I would say here the key is to be stubborn tell them and not in English in your target target language I'm going to speak this language to you because I want to practice okay and then if they reply to you in English because maybe they want to practice their English that is fine you just continue continue to reply in your target language and who knows maybe they'll switch and if they don't because they want to practice their English for example you can still figure out if what you're saying is being understood because you know if they're responding with the correct answers just in English, not in, well, maybe not the correct answers if it's not a question, but they are responding with something that makes sense to, you know, what you've said. Even if it's in English, 
you can tell if you've been understood and that's still great, you've done really well, you've been understood in your target language and you should be super happy about that. Even, yeah, it's a bit annoying that they are applying English but you should be happy about that. What I will say though is I only feel like it's okay to be so stubborn about speaking that language when you're in a country where it's spoken. Um, you know, for example, when um, I went to France, I would be really stubborn about speaking French, but if I meet a French person here in Bangor and I speak French to them and they reply to me in English, I think, you know what, like, especially in Bangor as well, because as a university, you get a lot of international students coming to learn English. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I get why they want to practice English. They're here for a year, they've only got a year here, they want to practice it kind of thing. So I will speak to them in English if they don't want to speak to me in French. That's fine because I remember, you know, I remember being in France and wanting people to speak French to me and I remember being there to, you know, learn French. Um, and not even just through university, just in general. I, I mean, you know, someone's built up the courage to come over to you and speak to you in English in an English speaking country and you if you then turn around and say speak to them in French, German or Spanish or whatever language um, you think is their native language from the accent that you happen to speak it's kind of going to be the same feeling as when you go to Germany, Spain or France or etc and yeah <laughs> speak that language and they speak to you in English so yeah or you can also make I mean, if this is someone that you're going to be friends with, you can make deals that you take turns in speaking English and speaking the target language, like switch, so both people get practice if they want to get practice. Just thought of that one that weren't even in my notes. I've got my notes right here on my computer. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I've been talking about this point for a very long time, so on to the next point. So the next language learning problem is spending basically all of your money, or not all of your money, but a lot of your money. Oh, that actually hurt my arm lifting those <laughs> on grammar books and conversation classes on websites like italki as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are ways to overcome this. There are loads of free resources online. You can watch grammar explanation videos on YouTube, you can find websites online which explain grammar points and have like certain questions that you can do, there's loads of exercises for free online, but for me, I don't know, there is just something about having my own grammar book and not one borrowed from the library that, you know, I can write notes in and everything's there, I can see a contents page, I mean, some of these websites have contents pages as well. And I don't have to search forever to find good sites and, you know, I can just read the reviews on Amazon or whatever, on the books, or, yeah. Or I spend ages finding a really good site and then there's only, say, 10 questions on a tense or an some sort of element of grammar that I really struggle with, because I feel like there's always more in the books, but I must say, why did you always make me pay extra for like the exercises? Like why? Well to be fair, in this book the exercises are in there, this they literally made me pay extra just for the answers. Of course I want the bloody answers if I've got the questions. I don't know if they're right, do I? I I wouldn't be buying a grammar book if I knew French grammar, like it was easy. Yeah. Anyway, and I haven't even mentioned the italki classes yet, have I? Of course, you can find tandem partners on apps like Hello Talk and italki, that's much more cheaper. I think there are premium versions, so I'm not gonna say like it's free, but it's still, I'm assuming would be much more cheaper if you're paying so much and you can just talk to as many people as you want. But of course, like as much as I love tandem, I have made an, a review and I do love tandem. You know, there are some disadvantages to tandem. There are some things that I don't like about it. And also sometimes it's just nice to know that, you know, you've got a set hour where you're going to be speaking just your target language whereas obviously with Tandem it's a language exchange app so with Hello Talk so you're going to have to speak English as well but it's nice to just have an hour you know you know you're just speaking that language and someone is definitely going to correct you anyway enough of that point <laughs> now the last point that I would like to mention is people asking you why you are learning a specific language maybe rather than one that uh, has more speakers worldwide or why are you learning any languages in general when there's 
Google Translate. Or when everybody speaks English, that one really annoys me. Now, there is nothing in particular that you can really do to overcome this. I'm sorry, I know I said there would be like, I would be explaining how to overcome these things, but there isn't really anything you can do to overcome this. You literally just have to ignore it, right? Because you know why you're learning that language and that's all that matters. Why does it matter what somebody else thinks? Like, think of that TikTok sound. If it makes you happy, it makes you happy and it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. And it's the same with language learning. If, you know, learning that language makes you happy or you know you just want to learn that language for whatever reason maybe you're learning it for work or you want to move to that country or whatever maybe you're literally just learning it just because you like a specific band or something you like music from that part of the world and you want to be able to understand the lyrics whatever your reason is you know that's why you're learning it right and that's all that matters and you know that there is no better feeling than speaking to somebody in that language after you've been studying it for so long and they understand you even if it's just the most simple briefest conversation like your first conversation that you have but they understand you and you get your point across even if your grammar isn't correct and you make some mistakes but they understand you that's just such a great feeling that is no better feeling than that and you know google translate is not going to give you that feeling whacking something in and then you know, pressing the audio button and playing it to somebody. Like, it's not gonna give you that same feeling. And even with so many different uh, translation softwares these days, you know, there's so much more than Google Translate, and uh, Google Translate isn't the best, as you probably all know. Um, but even with like better translation softwares coming out, you know, there's always gonna be times where some things will be lost in translation when it comes to translation software, like some cultural references and stuff that they're not gonna get that you just need. I mean, I'm not saying we should all go away and be translators. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you can learn a language and not do any translation. But yeah, I'm just saying. Who cares about Google Translate? Because Google Translate isn't perfect. And who cares if everybody speaks English? Because they don't. They don't. They don't. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, I hope you enjoyed having another video on my channel after so long. I hope you're not annoyed that I'm back. I mean, why would you have subscribed anyway? And if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. Um, I do usually upload videos every Sunday. It's just, yeah, a bit busy with uni and getting back to actually having a busy life again after two years of not being busy at all and having so much time for YouTube and now I have to get organised and to get my, you know, my life together. Uh, but yeah, subscribe down below if you enjoy this video. I will be better uploading and I do have good excuses, I swear, but I'm not going to ramble on about them all. And yeah, give this video a thumb up, th a thumb up, a thumbs up if you liked it and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!